right, good morning. Uh, once again, my name is Joel Kirschman, and uh, we'll be talking about 5G in, in a simulation environment. I have an outline of what we're going to uh, cover. There's just one thing that I'm not going to cover in particular. It's the National Instruments Hardware Solution, but you can come by our booth to see those live presentations with actual hardware and signals. Um, moving along, um, the reason why we're discussing 5G, because the name of the game is always able to enable more data being passed through shorter latency, and current standards don't give us what we want. Presumably, as consumers, we want more, faster, etc. Me, I'm kind of satisfied with 3G, but it keeps us employed, and we've got to move on to 5G. And as a consequence of um, you know wanting more and better and faster, we they. We're also moving to uh, higher frequencies and uh, transmit and receive. On the LTE side, we've gone up to 6 gigahertz. 5G indicates that we might even go up to 100 gigahertz in practice. So as a consequence of um, uh, looking at 5G, uh, people came up with other ideas of uh, creating signals other than OFDM that's used in LTE or Wi-Fi. Uh, signal generation, and they came up with filter bank multi-carrier. Uh, that's just a quick snapshot of what that means, and that entails using OF, uh, offset QAM. So it's a candidate waveform. That means it was considered as part of proposal, and uh, other candidate signals that were considered were generalized frequency division multiplexing and filtered OFDM. But just most recently, the three GPP organization settled on or is proposing cyclic prefix OFDM. And uh, just recently, Ericsson supported this uh, position as well. Um, CP OFDM is used in LTE. Some of the uh, things that it offers is it's less susceptible to phase noise. And like all OFDM signals, it has a high peak to average ratio. And uh, the last sentence there, yes, 5G uh, Verizon uh, test technical forum has also selected CPOFDM. So it says that it's uh, spectrally efficient. Um, um, OFDM and there are variations of OFDM which we just discussed uh, prior in the two slides. And if you look from a spectrum point of view, you can see yes, CPOFDM is spectrally efficient com compared to OFDM. And then you have other flavors of OFDM that are even more spectrally efficient. And then if you look at the peak to average ratio where the CCDF crosses the x-axis, they have similar numbers. So they all have high to peak to average ratios and people consider using different clipping techniques to reduce the peak to average ratio. And uh, if you drive that signal through the amplifier, you stay within the linear region. Yeah, once again, you have CPO FDM more spectrally efficient than uh, standard OFDM. However, if you start driving near compression to uh, increase your power added efficiency, game over. They, they all have, seem to have the same spectral e efficiency. Uh, we're running here and displaying uh, input power, output power. This is instantaneous AM, AM to AM information driving just slightly into compression. And here in the simulation environment, you can <coughs> Uh, real-time look at the results. So it's probably no wonder that uh, CPOFDM was chosen. Uh, it's compatible with LTE, and it's uh, far easier or easier to implement than the other proposed signals. And uh, moving along here, uh, if we look at um, the impact of phase noise on OFDM versus CPOFDM, uh, you can see that you do have an improvement in EVM if you do add a cyclic prefix. In this instance, I'm adding a cyclic prefix of one-eighth of a symbol. In the prior simulation, we had no cyclic prefix. The subject matter is 5G, but such simulations can be done in a proper simulation tool like this, and they can be applied to any standard where you can superimpose phase noise directly on a signal minus the impact of uh, mixers and look at a metric of your choice. In this case, it's error vector magnitude, EVM. And so as a consequence of working in the 5G environment, uh, there's a necessity to uh, simulate the channel model or the MIMO models. And um, every simulation tool should have some form of this MIMO model. Certainly in our environment, we've created 
the uh, 5G channel model as a representation of the number of transmit and number of received antennas. You can specify array geometry. You can specify a particular patch that's applied to each antenna. And you can then start passing the signal through and monitoring the impact of that channel model and uh, do perhaps receiver sensitivity type simulations as well. So if we look at the interface to this model, uh, a proper simulation tool should have a user interface that's uh, easy to understand. Uh, if you look here, the primary parameters that you have access are the number of transmit antennas, the number of received antennas, along with the position of each antenna in the X and Y direction. And then you can have an option here where you apply the same radiation pattern to all the elements. And then one can go further and then describe the profile of the channel model. And there are Wiener models anywhere from an indoor small office line of sight to uh, something called a bad urban macro cell. And uh, I don't know if I ever want to be in that environment, but, but we certainly can simulate that. And uh, moving along, yes, uh, Verizon uh, came, test forum came up with LTE carrier aggregation, and uh, we certainly have a test bench that will enable you, in this case, to simulate eight uh, signals simultaneously and uh, ultimately uh, to do error vector magnitude measurements or ACPR measurements. And if we just drill down into one of these signals generators, you'll see that we've built our signal generator from basic building blocks. The, the advantage of building from basic building blocks is that we can keep current with the specifications as opposed to changing hard code. We go into the rudimentary blocks and change the parameters as well as, as the uh, specifications are changing. Here we're indicating that we ha have the scrambling, the modulation mapping, and the layer ma mapping and pre-coding per Verizon uh, 5G specifications. And uh, when one, sim one simulates this, we do have an, an environment where you can look at the resulting uh, signals that are generated. We have a user interface that's kind of similar to ins instrumentation when you're making an ACPR measurement. You'll define the carrier frequency, the bandwidth, the corresponding offset, and the corresponding bandwidth. And uh, one can simulate uh, swept power and uh, simultaneously monitor ACPR measurements. And naturally, we do support EVM measurements where one can look at the IQ plot. Here we have 64 QAM, and we have the QPSK signal in the background. And uh, here we're just indicating an EVM trace that, or a simulation that was run without a device under test. And then we put the device under test, and we can see the direct impact on EVM on device under test. The device under test can be just an amplifier. It can be a whole transmit or a receive chain. Uh, it can be uh, inclusive of phase noise without phase noise. The flexibility of the tool is well, it's rather flexible simulation environment and what you want to simulate. Yeah. QPSK is the training overhead sequence for the channel? Yes, it probably is. I got to look at the spec. I mean, I got so many specs going in my mind, but 64 QAMs for the data, uh, that probably applies to one of the uh, training or pi I, pilot. But if you come by the the booth, what's our booth number? Well, anyway, National Instruments booth, I'll, I'll just, I'll pull this back out and I'll show you. Okay. Yeah. So to, now we were considering the 5G new radio uh, signal. And uh, what this slide is saying is that there are different subcarrier spacings that are going to be used, different uh, carrier frequencies, different modulation schemes. And uh, one of the mandatory things that they've decided right now is a 4,096 point FFT. Uh, so if, if one looks at this from a, a picture point of view, there's a large uh, variation in what type of signals will be generated in new radio. And uh, if you look at this plot here, or table, you see subcarrier spacing 15 kilohertz. You define the number of resource blocks. Here we 79. And then um, you can see here that the bandwidth is going to be 20 megahertz. So a simulation tool should have the uh, ability to uh, create these signals sufficient, efficiently without too much thought. Because if you're just testing a PA or a device under test, you don't want to get into the nitty gritty of the, the tool to uh, configure the signal. You just want to have uh, uh, an experience where you dial in the numbers, generate the signal, and make the measurement. 
So we support now you know, from below fifth, six gigahertz all the way to up to a millimeter wave, all the formats that are currently specified per 3GPP. Again, this 5G thing is still in flux. And uh, what we've built is a test bench in our environment where you can start the simulation. Okay, so we'll look at a particular configuration here. We're looking here at the 64 QAM, the QPSK signals in the background. We're looking at a, a spectrum centered at a frequency of choice. But from a user's perspective, as you're working with 5G and you're testing devices and possibly measuring EVM and ACPR measurements, et cetera, I can say, well, the data type the modulation I want to change to um, uh, 16 QAM and then possibly the subcarrier spacing I want to adjust to uh, 120 kilohertz subcarrier spacing. You'll see the resulting uh, bandwidth uh, increase. You'll see the constellation momentarily update. And uh, one can come here and look at the current device <coughs> under test here. If I just zoom in in this system diagram. And I'll stop the simulation and then I'll just tell you what we're currently running, and uh, the, the, uh, the sky is the limit. There's no um, uh, limitation on what you simulate here. It's your choice, and if I go here into the uh, sub-circuit and we just zoom in here, what we have here is a phase noise uh, channel where we're superimposing uh, a phase noise mask directly onto the IQ signal. Currently, we have this block that is disabled and that'll simulate amplitude and phase imbalance and a DC offset and the device under test it also includes an amplifier. So the impairments of the, um, on the signal can be simulated in the environment and you can look at the real world effects on the metrics of EV, EVM, ACPR in this test bench. And again, 5G specifications are changing so this test bench will change as the specs change. And then once it solidifies, We'll have our final test bench per the specifications. Right now, we're missing the physical layer one specifications and some of the framing aspects of the, of the signal, but that'll, that's in flux. So that leads me to the um, last slide over here. Uh, we are committed to uh, keeping up with the specifications of Verizon 5G test forum, and uh, that also implies that we'll start changing the channel model to keep current with the specifications, and uh, we're obligated to start working in a MIMO environment. And we do have projects where we have two by two. Uh, we have projects where you can um, simulate multiple LTE signals and um, monitor throughput as you push one LTE signal into another. So you can have four LTE signals separated by 20 degrees. What happens if you start merging them? And you can watch the degradation of throughput. So you can handle uh, beam forming and uh, direction of the beam pointing, et cetera. 